John in the 10th chapter, if you would like to turn and read along with me. John chapter 10. We'll be beginning in verse 7 this morning. John chapter 10, beginning in verse 7. It says, Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks and the flock uh, attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them in also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me. But I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the word of the Lord for us today. You know, many times throughout the scriptures, God is described as a shepherd to his people. And it's probably not much coincidence that God is described in that way because Many people throughout history have been shepherds. And you look back in the scriptures, many prominent people uh, throughout the, the line of, especially the line of Jesus, the line that we have described in the Bible, were shepherds from Abel to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, uh, on to Moses to David. All of them knew what it was to knew what it was like to, to lead and to care for sheep, which were very valuable animals. But the problem with sheep was that they were also very vulnerable to attack, and they were prone to wander from the flock. And all in all, they weren't the brightest creatures in all of God's creation, in all of the animal kingdom. And so that's why the job of the shepherd was so important. Being a shepherd was not just a, a nine to five job. You could just go hang your shepherd's crook up on the coat rack when you finished in the evening and, and you didn't have to worry about them for the rest of the day. No, it was, it was a job that you stayed with the sheep constantly. You had to keep an eye on them at all hours of the evening. You led them to pasture, you led them to water, and of course you provided protection for them. And because they were so valuable for things like their milk and their wool, of course for meat and sacrifices as well, uh, if one wandered off, it was the shepherd's job to go and to, to search for it until it could be found. Uh, he was accountable for all of the sheep in, under his care, under his watch. Jesus told a parable about a shepherd of a flock of a hundred. Uh, and if one of them wandered off, he would leave the 99 in a safe place until, and he would search for that one until that one was found and he would carry that one and he would cradle it and he'd carry it in his arms and he would gather all his friends back around and there would be great rejoicing over this one that was found. That's how valuable the sheep were to the shepherd. The shepherd was vital to the sheep. He was a, uh, the shepherd was a familiar figure to all of the people in this region. And so it's no wonder that they would project this image onto God then. 
described uh, God in this way both in the Old Testament and the New. Perhaps you're familiar with at least one of the 150 Psalms. Psalm 23 begins this way, The Lord is my, what? Shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me to paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, David could write those words about the shepherd because he himself was a shepherd. He knew exactly what it was to care for, to tend the sheep. But you see, he knew uh, how much more uh, that God cared for him. David knew that he cared so much for his sheep that if a lion or a bear, he says, came to attack the flock, that he himself would go and and fend off the the lion or bear to snatch the sheep out of the, the mouths of those creatures and even kill them with his bare hands. How much more so does God care for me, he says. It's no wonder he describes God in such a familiar way. But you see, not only is God described in in such a way, but it's oftentimes that the leaders of the people are described as a shepherd as well. But many of the references, sadly, that we find to the leaders are found in a negative sense, in that they didn't care for the sheep, that they let the people wander away that they only cared for themselves as a shepherd. All of this, you see, this imagery that is so familiar to the people, all of this is the backdrop for this sermon here that that Jesus uh, lays out, he gives on this occasion here in John chapter 10. And in this, he describes the relationship between a shepherd and his sheep. You see, it's oftentimes that a shepherd would lead his sheep out to pasture during the day, but at night he would bring them back into to some sort of pen. In this area of the country or in this area of the world, uh, that pen would be perhaps a cave uh, with uh, just one opening. Or, or perhaps if you're out in an open field, they would gather rocks of some sort or make it some way uh, where you would only have one way into this enclosure. One opening. And it's not like they constructed a a nice uh, uh, swinging fence that we have, a swinging gate that you have uh, nowadays, but the shepherd himself would become the gate for that pen. You see, the shepherd at night would, would lay down in that opening, and he would become the gate making sure that no sheep got out of the pen and nothing that wasn't supposed to be in, in the pen would get in, would penetrate. That's why he could say a thief would have to come in by some other way, climbing over the enclosure or, or trying to, to fight in over the gate. Jesus used this illustration to say a couple of things. First, to say that He is the gate to that sheep pen. He is the way. He is the only way to enter into the pen, enter into His kingdom, the kingdom of God. The only way to enter into that kingdom is through Him. But now, here's the kicker, you see. This sermon that Jesus prepares here, this sermon that He delivers, is on the heels of a man uh, being healed, a man being given back his sight, after being born blind, being uh, his whole life not being able to see, Jesus comes along uh, uh, and, and, and heals him. It's where we get those famous words, I, I once was blind, but now I see. It's that guy that utters those words. But the Pharisees, those in charge of the synagogue, the church of that time, had a bone to pick with that healing, you see. Uh, They couldn't deny it. They they tried to. 
But because this healing took place on the Sabbath, and because Jesus spat on the ground and made a little mud with that spit and applied it on his eyes to perform that healing, well, they claim that to be doing work. And you couldn't do work on the Sabbath. That was a violation. And so they said, well, there's no way that this man could be from God because he, he violated the Sabbath. So they tried to discount the miraculous healing of this man. And they went so far as to kick the blind man out of the synagogue. They excommunicated him because of what had taken place, all on account of Jesus. You see now in this sermon, Jesus is contra contrasting himself with those who, who think they hold the keys to the kingdom. Those who were supposed to be the shepherds of the people. Jesus who says, those who come before me are, are nothing but thieves and robbers. In other words, these, these Pharisees have nothing uh, of the things of God in, in mind when leading the people. They're only thinking of themselves. When, when you kick a guy out of church for being healed by God, that tells you that they're only thinking of themselves. They don't have the things of God in mind. But Jesus says, I am the gate. I am the door. I am the way to the kingdom. No one enters but through me. The thief, the thief comes to kill and to steal and destroy, but I have come to give life and to give it to the full. The Pharisees, the Pharisees were only interested in providing for themselves to protect themselves. They took advantage of the people, using them for their own game and uh, own gain. And you see that a little later on when when they incited the crowd to call for the the execution of Jesus because he didn't fit into the mold of of what they wanted a Messiah to look like. But but when you enter into the gate. When you enter through the gate, you, you receive life. You are saved from the wild beasts that, that look to only to destroy you at every turn. You enter into the abundant of life. Enter in, into that abundant life. Into the pasture of the Lord. And not only is Jesus the gate, He says, but He is the Good Shepherd. And not just a shepherd, and not just a good shepherd, but the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Uh, as opposed to the thief and the robber, and even the hired hand, or the, the false prophet who's, who at the first stirring up of trouble hightails it out of there, leaving the, the sheep to fend for themselves. Leaving the sheep damaged and destroyed. And even the true shepherd who, who, who does care for the sheep, but the, sheep, the shepherd will, will even risk his life, perhaps, or take risks to, to protect the sheep. But even then, when he's taking risk, he expects to come out of it alive. David expected to come out of those battles alive with the bear, with the lion. But the good shepherd here, he says, he lays down his life for the sheep. And not because he has to, but because he wants to. Because he willingly and voluntarily went to the cross on our behalf. No one took his life from him, but he laid it down on his own accord, he said. You know, later on, Pilate would say, uh, you know, I have the power to free you. I have the power to, t to crucify you. you. Basically, you should be giving me more respect here. You should be giving me the answers that I'm looking for. Uh, and Jesus just said, you would have no power at all if it weren't given to you from above. You don't understand what's going on here, Pilate. Jesus had the power and authority to lay down His life and to take it up again. And through His death and resurrection, Jesus calls out to His sheep. And they listen to His voice and they follow Him. He says He knows His sheep by name and He calls out to them. You look at the resurrection story after the resurrection with Mary there in the garden tomb. Jesus' body is now missing and there's two angels there uh, seated at the tomb and they ask, why are you crying, Mary? And she says, well, they've taken the body of the Lord and we don't know where they've put Him. Could you just tell me what's going on here? 
And all of a sudden she turns around and she sees a, a man there and she thinks he's the gardener. And he says, well, what, what is, what's wrong with you? And she tells the same thing. Oh, they've taken the body of the Lord and we don't know what's going on. And she didn't recognize him as Jesus until he called her name. And he just simply said, Mary. And that's all it took. And her eyes were opened. And she said, My Lord, Jesus. She heard her name. She recognized His voice when He called her by name. Jesus is calling out your name. Do you hear Him? Do you recognize His voice? We are so much like sheep. You do get that we are the sheep in this story, right? Isaiah says that, that we all, like sheep, have gone astray. We are prone to wandering and getting lost and vulnerable to the evils of this world. Prone to following voices of others who will lead us to dangerous places. I, I heard a, a story from, from Turkey back in, in 05 where, where one sheep decided it would be cool to, to jump off the side of a cliff. I don't know if he jumped or if he, if he just fell, but one way or another, he ended up going overboard, over the side of a cliff. But here's the thing. Once he went, another followed, and then another, and then another. Because all of these sheep saw their little sheep buddies doing the same thing, and so they just kept going, one right after another. And after it was all said and done, 1,500 sheep had gone over the side of this cliff because they were just following blindly, aimlessly, one right after another. And over 400 of these sheep ended up dying that day. And it would have been more had they not made a nice little landing pile for the rest of them uh, and they cushioned the blow for the rest of these that had just followed them aimlessly over the side of the cliff. We're so much like these blind little sheep, just following any little voice that, we want, that we'll hear, following any little thing that'll give us attention. This, this sounds good over here, so let me try this. Let me go this way. Except we've got a shepherd who's calling out to us, who's trying to lead us into a better way, into a better life, and he's calling out our name. He's calling your name. Do you hear Him? Have you heard Him call your name? Have you heard His voice? He's searching for the lost. And all of heaven, He says, rejoices over the one lost that is returned. When we respond, when we are found, when we accept His gift of salvation, He welcomes us into the flock. And no one, no one can snatch us from His hand. Perhaps you're here today and you've realized the Spirit has convicted you that you're far from Him. That you've been one of those little sheep that's, that's wandered far away from the shepherd. You've been running. You've been trying to escape. The shepherd is calling. He's calling your name. It's time to listen. It's time to listen. He's calling. Come to Him today. There's only one. There's only one name. The name above all names. There's only one, one way. His name is Jesus. Will you hear Him today? I'd ask you to respond as we sing our closing hymn this morning. If you need to respond to Him today, would you come? and pray. If you know of another that needs to...